Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and Mood. Today's topic in orthodontics is N loss V principle or expanding V principle. So we were talking about the growth, uh, the pattern of growth. So we discussed Scammon's growth curve, cephalocaudal gradient of growth and uh, the pattern of growth that is drift and displacement. So this is a concept by Enlo. He says the expansion happening in the form of V. That is expanding V. So it starts like this and it goes expanding. So the V expands. So that is the idea behind this. So the craniofacial bones or their parts it has a v-shaped configuration or uh, we can say funnel shape in three dimension so it's all two dimensional pictures so it is a funnel shaped bones in three dimensional picture so enla point out that the bones grew by addition on the inner side of v and removal of bone or resorption from the outer side okay so this concept of bone growth is known as V principle of Enlo. So according to this principle, bone deposition occurs on the inner side and the resorption takes place on the outer side and which leads to the widening of V. Okay, so on the inner side, the position happens, happens, so it slowly widens and becomes a expanded V, just like this. So it is going like this. So, the expanded V where the structure translates from its original position and moves towards the wide end of the V. So, it, at the beginning it was here and it translates to here. So, the position changes. Okay. So, it starts from the small V to the expanded V. So it translates to this position to this position. So this is just a diagrammatic uh, explanation. So it is on the wider end of V. So wider end of V. So the most common bone is a palatal bone and the mandible also follows the V principle. So in palate, the hard palate viewed in the coronal section shows that the resorption occurring on the outer surface that is the nasal surface okay and the deposition on the inner surface that is palatal side okay so the resorption on the nasal side and deposition on the palatal side which leads to the palatal remodeling and it follows the V principle whereas uh, the mid palatal suture and secondary displacement happens due to the growth of nasal bone which increases the width of palate and causes its vertical descent. Next one is a ramus. So the ramus, this is a ramus. This is from the top view and the side view. So ramus, the growth of the mandible also uh, follows the V principle. When viewed from above, this picture, when viewed from above, uh, the contail and the ramus expand in a posterior and lateral direction due to growth of the body uh, ramus and the contail itself. So it expands backward and also laterally okay, because of the growth of body ramus and contail itself. So growth is accompanied by progressive relocation of the entire ramus in a posterior direction. So this is the initial position and this is the final position so you can see the v concept it is getting expanded and translated to the wider ends of v so the resorption occurs on the anterior edge with a resultant lingual shift of the anterior part of ramus to become added to the body so the resorption occurs on the lingual side and 
the deposition on the buccal side. So this palate and this mandible follows the expanding V principle. It's a very simple principle. The addition is happening on the inner side, resorption on the outer side and the bone translates to the wider end of V and it is getting expanded. So that is all about Henlow's V principle. Henlow has put forward another principle along with his accepted V principle that is a counterpart principle. So counterpart principle says that the growth of any given facial or cranial part relates specifically to other structural and geometric counterparts in relation to it. So he says that there will be a counterpart for most of the bones. So there are many structures in the craniofacial skeleton which can be considered as counterparts such as nasomaxillary complex and anterior cranial fossa, then middle cranial fossa and width of ramus, maxillary tuberosity and lingual tuberosity. So there will be always a balance. So to maintain the balance, there will be a growth happens on both the bones simultaneously. So this theory uh, or this principle had many shortcomings and it is rejected. So the Enlo V or expanding V principle is a accepted one from Enlo. So these are the two concepts uh, put forward by Enlo. One is expanding V principle and the counterpart principle. So I'll come up with a new topic in orthodontics. Thank you.